This is what happened in the world since we last uploaded. In a week where Byron Bay locals staged a dramatic protest against a new Netflix series by paddling about in the water before returning to their usual activity of paddling about in the water. Barnaby Joyce was locked in a hot car and wasn't he furious? Our and they're pushing for this position too. Problem. This is Our not a China issue. And NASA showed that even on Mars you can't get a bit of peace and quiet without some idiot showing up with a bloody drone. But our week began on Thursday, with the Navy under heavy fire. The Navy is facing growing backlash this morning over a decision to allow a dance troupe's performance at the commissioning of HMAS Supply in Sydney. Chief of Defence Angus Campbell was among the audience members as the dancers performed a fairly risque routine. The Governor-General was also in attendance. It's being criticised as not appropriate for the ceremonial occasion. That's true. A proper military decorum demands a hip turn, slide turn, then a drop and pop. But it wasn't just booties shaking. The nation itself was shook. The Daily Telegraph called it a boaty call, questioned the Navy's twerk ethic, then in a two-page lift out to cover all the outrage angles, dubbed it naval warfare and a 21-bun salute. Which, by my math, suggests that one of the dancers only has one buttock. The video caused the entire Today Show team to twerk on screen, including political editor Chris Yulman. Gee whiz. You're not getting that at the ABC. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. Not that we're above it. Uh, we just can't. Because, tragically, Michael Rowland has no butt. There were just two problems with this story. One, that's technically not twerking. It's dance hall. Get your Jamaican rhythm dance styles right, bomba clut. For God's sakes, lively up yourself. And two, this is a big one. Major David Hurley and Fleet Commander Michael Noonan weren't actually there. Dragged into what has become a Defence Force scandal because of deceptive editing by the national broadcaster. Deceptive editing of the inappropriate dance that would have offended the people there if they were there, which they weren't, which is good and bad. To Friday and more evidence that the scourge of sexy dancing had spread all the way to the top. <laughs> Prime Minister Scotty Morrison there, a real twerking class man. And we learned the naval dancing controversy wasn't the only drastic military move this week. US President Joe Biden has officially announced that US troops will leave Afghanistan by the 20th anniversary of the September the 11th terrorist attacks on the US. And it's time to end the forever war. It was a war so long that parents and their kids served in the same conflict. A war so long even the producers of MASH said, wow, you've really stretched this out. And with the US leaving, Australia said, wait for me. Australia's war in Afghanistan is coming to an end. After 20 years of conflict overseen by seven of our Prime Ministers, an emotional Scott Morrison says it's time for the diggers to come home. These brave Australians are amongst our greatest ever who have served in the name of freedom. 41 Australians lost their lives, hundreds more were injured. Four Australians received the Victoria Cross. In all, 20,000 served. The war has come at a great cost, with more than 43,000 civilians losing their lives and a bill totalling over 2.2 trillion US dollars. But you know what they say, the price of freedom is 2.2 trillion dollars. So, after 20 years, are we leaving the country in a better place than we found it? The US's own intelligence assessment says that uh, the Afghan government will struggle to hold the Taliban at bay. Frankly, it's going to be, I fear, a repeat of what we saw in Iraq after the US left. We only had to go back with a bigger force. Well, sounds like we better get our troops home now so we can send them back again. To Saturday. And we learned that despite surging COVID numbers in Japan and two-thirds of locals wanting the Olympics cancelled or postponed, Boned, the Olympic chief said, nah, we're doing it anyway. The head of the Tokyo Olympics say there are no plans to cancel the Games this summer. Tokyo's Olympics chief says Japan remains committed to holding a safe Games despite a surge of COVID-19 cases in the country. Ah, the Olympic spirit. Higher, faster, more infectious. In fact, Tokyo is so stuck in last year, even its official Olympic website is still calling it Tokyo 2020, a damning indictment of Amiga's official timekeeping. And with the Games about to begin, nations started unveiling their uniforms, with Russia banned from sending an official team or displaying its flag due to doping controversies, the Russian athletes
athletes still competing decided to just wear the flag, proving just how much they've learned about obeying Olympic rules. The US has a little number that says, I just negatively geared my investment yacht, while Canada's outfits appear to be inspired by a divorcee determined to get back out there. To Sunday, and the world said a sombre farewell to the Duke of Edinburgh. The procession sets off to the sound of cannons passing an empty carriage where Prince Philip once sat, his riding hat and gloves left on the seat, a naval whistle signifying his arrival at St George's Chapel. Onlookers were emotional and local dogs were distraught. The saddest image, the Queen, forced by COVID protocols to mourn alone. Steadfast and strong, images of the Queen sitting alone in her final farewell to the man who stood by her side for seven decades. Her husband's coffin lowered into the royal vault where she'll join him upon her passing. Oh, easy guys, one at a time. The talk of the funeral was Princes William and Harry as the palace attempted a bold plan to keep them apart by using their cousin Peter as the meat in their feud sandwich. It's being reported that Prince William asked for Peter Phillips to walk between them. In other words, that he didn't want to walk next to Harry. The one thing for certain, these two would not be talking. And as the family left the chapel, a sight many didn't expect to see. Princes William and Harry leaving together with Kate talking as normal. You had one job, Peter. It's your funeral next. As part of the coverage, members of the royal family shared their own fond memories of Philip. He was inspirational in getting me to join the Navy, but not for the reasons that you might think. Oh, so it wasn't because there are no laws in international waters. Interesting. But the star of the funeral was this tasteful green Land Rover that Prince Philip designed himself to one day carry his coffin a Land Rover that he specifically modified and helped to design being used in the funeral. Yes, so that will be his hearse. I'll tell you what, that is going to make one hell of a Gumtree used car ad. For sale, Land Rover slash hearse, low kilometres, one owner, a little old man who only ever used it to drive to church once. Channel 9 announced there would be no urology at the funeral, which makes sense. Given it's a funeral, it would be inappropriate to take the piss. And in the end, thanks to 100,000 complaints, the BBC somehow limited itself to just the six most essential hours of the broadcast, while Channel 7 couldn't resist showing more. And if you missed the funeral or would like to see it again, there'll be a 7 News special presentation over on 7 2. And on 7 Mate, we'll be showing funeral bloopers, followed by a touching tribute from the Ice Road truckers while the ABC's editing department offered this poignant performance. Monday, and the Trans-Tasman travel bubble opened with another controversially sexy dance routine. And I pray the Governor-General didn't see that. But despite that disgusting display, there was still cause to celebrate. The Trans-Tasman bubble is open for business. Thousands of travellers are preparing to fly across the ditch this morning as New Zealand allows visitors from Australia in, importantly, without them having to spend 14 days in isolation. And if the opening wasn't high pressure enough, the Today Show's Lara Vella decided to do her report backwards. We know that Qantas and Jetstar, in fact, JQ201, it was the first flight that took off. We'll be back with more from Lara as she slides around the baggage carousel. And after a year spent grounded, Australian Airlines had to remember, how do fly again? Virgin Australia's CEO was interviewed as her staff picked a deeply inappropriate time to have a go on the slippery dip. We're really excited because today we're announcing the start of a journey to bring back quite a lot of capacity into the Australian market. Followed by an enthusiastic demonstration reminding us just how relaxing air travel can be. The feeling of the bubble opening was perhaps best summed up by New Zealand PM Jacinda Ardern. I would have loved to have you know, just been a bystander to see those families reunited for the first time. A scene from Love Actually is probably how I anticipate it would look. You know what? I think she's right. Whenever I get gloomy about the state of the vaccine rollout or the pandemic in general, I like to think about the international arrivals gate at Sydney and Auckland airports and do my best Hugh Grant impression, obviously. General opinion is starting to make out that the post-COVID world is a lot like the COVID world, still chock full of blasted bloody COVID. But I don't see that. It seems to me there are little travel bubbles everywhere. 
As far as I know, they're not all shedding a mutating viral load. They're reuniting with families while being hassled by reporters, or finally kissing their lovers while being hassled by reporters. And of course, if you look hard enough, I have a not-so-sneaky feeling you'll hear people saying things like excellent or individual or egg or collect your baggage at Kerasol Sucks and realise that Kiwis are actually all around. F***ing everywhere. To Tuesday, and following a petition led by young activists demanding more education on consent... What needs to happen is that consent is taught far earlier and actually taught. The federal government launched new consent education materials for schools, and it went great. There's anger this morning over a federal government video which uses milkshakes and tacos to teach children about sexual consent. It's a taxpayer-funded campaign teaching our children about sexual consent using a milkshake. Littered with euphemisms, it raises more questions than it answers. None of the 350 videos aimed at students in years 10 to 12 mention the word sex, rape or assault. But other than that, it was totally on point. And just one day later, some of the videos were deleted. Two controversial consent education videos, which cost taxpayers almost $4 million, have been taken down from the Federal Education Department's website. But I don't want to judge too soon. Let's watch this together. To cross into the action zone, both people must agree. Great. The action zone. I don't mind saying that I have been to the action zone at least twice. All right, let's go. Do you want to try my milkshake? Yes, I do. Is it better than yours? You know, I think I prefer mine. OK, not how I remember the action zone, but uh, look, I think I get it. I think I get it. Always ask for consent before having sex with a milkshake. Right, uh, what's next? What happens when one person takes action without an agreement? You do, huh? Well, drink it. Drink it all. What are you doing? Drink it all. Tell you what, kids these days are into some weird stuff. I blame Grand Theft Auto. All right, so I'm in the action zone. I'm covered in milkshake. What's next? Consider this taco. There's a taco. OK, uh, well, I'm considering this taco. Uh, th th does that really go with a milkshake? Well, no, 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 I get it, I get it, I get it. If the milkshake is sex, then the taco must be a person. A taco is an object. Ah, oh, shit. A person is a person. Well, obviously, but, 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 but can a person milkshake a taco if they're both in the action zone? Do you know what? I'm starting to think this is all just a complete waste of money. Well, I was going to say time, but yes, also that. Look, look why, why is this so confusing? The whole point is to teach kids about consent in clear, easily understood language. Just say what you want. Can I touch your butt? God, you could at least buy me a milkshake first. Which brings us to today, Wednesday. And in the United States, the trial of Derek Chauvin, the policeman who killed George Floyd, finally concluded. Guilty. A Minneapolis jury convicts Derek Chauvin on all counts for the murder of George Floyd. History was made by this exceedingly rare conviction of a police officer for the murder of an African American. While it would never have happened if it weren't for the shocking video of the incident, the relief for America was palpable. Nothing can ever bring their brother, their father back. But this can be a giant step forward in the march toward justice in America. We are all a part of George Floyd's legacy. And our job now is to honor it and to honor him. Today, we are able to breathe again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A definitive statement that black lives do matter, which reverberated around the world. Meanwhile, on Sunrise, the New South Wales Education Department has launched an inquiry into a Sydney primary school after confronting posters were found plastered on the classroom walls. Yeah, for more, we're joined by New South Wales Police Minister David Elliott. This is nothing short of indoctrination. I don't want to see uh, taxpayers' money uh, going into an alleged education when, when children are going to walk away thinking that police are somehow racist. We don't have a race problem here in Australia. How, how could teachers at a school like that 
allow them to be displayed. Hey, let's not blame all the teachers. Maybe it was just a few bad apples. Another saga coming to an end this week. The biggest news in the biggest sport in the world. Soccer has been thrown into chaos following a decision by Europe's biggest clubs to start a rebel league. A breakaway league of Europe's top clubs has been rumoured for a while, but the plans have never been as advanced as this. It will be headlined by England's Big Six. Joining them from Spain will be the three powerhouse clubs there. The three other teams come from Italy. And the football world responded with anger from the players. It's criminal. It's a criminal act against football fans in this country. This is, for me, a war on football. Threats from the governing body. UEFA hit back hard, saying it would expel the club's players from future European championships and World Cups. UEFA and the footballing world stand united against the disgraceful, self-serving proposal we have seen in the last 24 hours and protests from the fans. Chelsea fans descended on the ground here. They sang, they chanted. It was very good-natured, very, very vocal indeed, and very angry. But like it or not, the league would be going ahead. It appears a proposed soccer Super League is dead after all six Premier League clubs pulled out of the new multi-billion dollar competition. Or not. Super League relegated after a spectacular own goal.